I'm doing it uh, a little bit more than a month from now. We'll be entering into the month of Ramadan, inshallah. And the month of Sha'ban, which is coming very soon, it is a month wherein the Prophet sallallahu he fasted more than any other month of the year. Um, according to one narration, they say he fasted almost the entire month of Sha'ban. And when he was asked by Usama ibn Zayn, radiallahu anhu, um, why is it that I observe you fasting this month more than any other month of the year outside of Ramadan? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, said, that is a month that the people are negligent of, that happens between Rajab and um, and, uh, and Ramadan, the Rajab and Ramadan. But that the Shahran turfa'u fihi al-amaru ila rabbil al-ameen. And it is also a month wherein deeds are lifted up to the Lord of the worlds. فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَنِي وَأَنْ أَصَائِمْ So I like for my, for my deeds to be lifted up to the heavens while I'm fasting. The Prophet says something similar about Monday and Thursday. He said that during those two days, that during Monday, Mondays and Tuesdays, your deeds are reviewed by the Lord of the worlds. We find a similar hadith where the Prophet mentions that, that the deeds of the day, they are lifted up before the nighttime falls. And the deeds that are done at night, they are lifted up before the morning, etc., etc. In other words, that there is a daily review. There is a weekly review. And there's an annual review in Sha'ban. But the Prophet also encourages us to do good things during the inviolable months. The Sha'ban is still not here. It's almost here. We're in the month of Rajab. This is a special month of the year. It is a month that was declared to be special from the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens of the earth. Rajab. This month. And our scholars would encourage Muslims to do as much good as they could. One particular child said that Rajab is the month where we plant good deeds. And the month of Shaban is the month where those deeds are watered. So he sort of compared them to the crops. It's like planting crops during this month in the month of Shaban, we water the crops. And then in the month of Ramadan, we harvest them. In other words, to habit yourself into things that are good. You start early, you get an early start, and so that once it, when the time comes when it truly matters, you get the ultimate reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Ashkur Hurum in the Quran, فَلَا تَظْلِمُ فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not wrong yourself during those months. Some say during all the months, but especially during the four months of Dhu'qa'da, Dhu'l-Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. Now, Rajab is also special historically because many Muslims have believed that during the month of Rajab was the extremely important event known as Isra Mi'raj. Where in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Subhana al-ladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-mashid al-haram min al-mashid al-aqsa, al-ladhi barakna hawlahu liyuriyahu liyuriyahu min ayatina, inna hu wa sami' al-basir." Glory be to Him who took His servant by night from the Masjid al-haram to the Masjid al-aqsa, upon which we have bestowed many blessings, in order that we show to Him our many signs. And so this story, we're all familiar with it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wakes up, he's awakened by the angel, he brings him outside of his home, he presents him with the Burak, this animal similar to a horse, but smaller than a mule, larger than a donkey but with wings on his legs, which helps it pick up momentum as it travels. 
and it can gallop as far as it sees in one direction. One gallop. So he travels to Beit al Maqdis, Masjid al Aqsa, Al Sham, Dosti, many different things we call it. And he returns in the same night. In the morning, he decides to go tell the people to announce this to his people. The Mushrikeen and the Mu'minin. And his cousin, she didn't think it would be a good idea because she felt the people would ridicule him. So the Prophet said, Wallahi, I'm going to tell them. He goes out and tells them. Last night I went to Jerusalem and went to the Aqsa. And I came back last night too. The Mushrikeen has said, We finally got him. We finally got him. All this time, finally, after 10 years of him preaching what they considered to be falsehood, that finally they felt that they felt, we're going to get him this time. We're going to show him to be a fraud. So they go and they start to spread the news. And unfortunately, there were many people who were Muslims who were following the Prophet at the time, actually left. They became apostates. They left Islam because of this. They found it too unbelievable. They found it too unbelievable. They approached Abu Bakr Siddiq before he sees the Prophet himself and they tell him the story your friend he said last night he went to Jerusalem and came back today Abu Bakr's response at first was you're lying he never said such a thing that was his response they said yes he did he's in the masjid now in the haram he's telling people that that's what happened so Abu Bakr responds next well, if he said it, then he speaks the truth. And why should I not believe him? And he says such a thing. I, I believe him when he says something even much more unbelievable than that. He says he gets revelation that the sin from the heavens all the way down to him. So why would I not believe him when he says that he traveled to Jerusalem last night and came back? So Abu Bakr, he comes to the Prophet, and he says, well, Ya Rasulullah, did you tell him this? And he says, yes, I did. This is what happened. Abu Bakr, I went. I traveled last night. And Abu Bakr says, Ya Rasulullah, I've been there before. Describe to me what you saw. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he brought the Masjid Aqsa within view of the Prophet. He can see it right before his eyes and he says over here is this thing and then over here is that and you find this arch or that is he was explaining he was describing every single detail about the Masjid Aqsa or that particular territory and Abu Bakr every time he said one thing Abu Bakr says Salakta you've spoken the truth Salakta you've spoken the truth Salak you've spoken the truth over and over and over and then the Prophet Turns to Abu Bakr and says, And you, O Abu, Abu Bakr, you are a Siddiq. And that was actually the, from the moment, that moment, Abu Bakr was referred to as a Siddiq, the truthful one who confirms the truth of others. He, was, he became Abu Bakr and Siddiq at that moment. This is conviction. Think about this it's like, Ten years, the Prophet's promising the poor Muslims of Mecca, the persecuted Muslims of Mecca, that one day you want to rule all of this. One day you want to rule Persia and Rome. But it seems that every time they try to make progress, they don't nothing happens for them. This persecution, increased persecution over and over and over. And remember that this itself was after three years of embargo, almost starved to death, right, on the outskirts of Mecca. So it makes sense when many people know that they had enough. They left. But look at Abu Bakr's his, 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 his conviction. How would we have responded? That's really the important question, brothers and sisters, when we reflect upon this story. How might have we responded? But we have had similar patients that the Muslims who remain committed to the message that was brought by the, the Prophet 
in spite of all of their hardships and all of their persecution, how would you have fared? And it is because of this, Abu Bakr, when Abu Bakr, when the Prophet was on his, was close to dying, he came out and he made a speech to the Muslim. It says, there is a servant who Allah has given a choice between continuing to live in this life or to join him in the hereafter. And that servant chose to go to his Lord. Abu Bakr, when he heard this, he started to cry. And he said, we would ransom our own mothers and fathers by you, O Rasulullah. The other Sahaba were confused. They didn't get it. Like, what are you talking about? He just told the story. He talked about there's some servant, there's some guy that Allah gave a choice. But Abu Bakr, he understood. He knew the Prophet better than other people. And the Prophet ﷺ continues, he goes on to say that, that the most reliable of all of my friends, all of those who could accompany me, And the most reliable of those who have supported me with their wealth is Abu Bakr. And if I were to take someone as a best friend, then I don't, I don't want to take it, Abu Bakr as my best friend. When I can khullat al Islam, however, there's the friendship of Islam. He's Khalilullah. And then he goes on and says, لا يبقى يلنا في المشير خوقة إلا خوقة خوقة أبي بكر. There should not remain a خوقة, an aperture, an opening to their home in the masjid after he dies other than the خوقة of Abi Bakr. And that has been the situation up until this very day. This is how special Abu Bakr was to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. So it's a story, a message of sincerity, a message about, a message about conviction, and we always have to put ourselves in the place of those other people. Ask ourselves, how sincere, how committed are we to the message? But we have believed as well. We pray that we would have, and that we would never turn our backs on the messenger, alayhi salatu salam, aqulu qawli hadha, wa sallam wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa sallam wa sallam wa sallam. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والسيد المصريين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت تواب الرحيم اللهم كن المسلمين موسمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات واغفرنا الله ومعهم بفضل الإحسان في جاء أحمى الرحيم اللهم بارك لنا في رجل المشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في رجل المشعبان وبلغنا رمضان اللهم بارك لنا في رجل المشعبان وبلغنا رمضان ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه الأحبار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربك يا رب العزة حمّا يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين وحكم الصلاة